Hi, I'm Steve with Moose Logic, and we're back today with a short video here um, about three things. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, HBAs, host bus adapters, um, as they relate specifically to uh, iSCSI, connecting to a Zen server. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple issues um, we blogged about before, but uh, with Zen servers, uh, high availability, HA, uh, a couple issues that we've run into before. Uh, and I'm just going to mention a tool that we found out here just about recently, uh, not real publicly available, it's called the Host Dev Scan. It's actually a plug-in for Zen Server, and I'll talk about what that does. And if by chance this happens to be impacting you, uh, go ahead and reach out to us, uh, and I'll, I'll get it to you. Um, so, first thing I want to talk about is, is why does Moose Logic like to use uh, host bus adapt adapters when we're building Zen Servers? There's a couple reasons. Um, first of all, Zen Server 5.5 had a limitation, and before, had a limitation of six networks. Uh, you could put 12 NICs in and bond them into six networks. Uh, with 5.6, that has been increased to 16 NICs uh, for eight networks. Um, sounds like a great number, depending on the uh, size of your deployment. That may not be enough. Um, what's nice about HBAs is Zen Server does not see them, does not know they're there, and they don't get counted against you. Whereas if you're using Open iSCSI and you're trying to make your Open iSCSI uh, redundant, you'll usually want to um, bond a pair of NICs uh, and set up your Open iSCSI. Um, another good reason to use host bus adapters is they're really simple to set up. Um, there's a couple ways to set them up. You can use the um, command line, the CLI. Or you can also go into the um, what's called the IS CLI, which is a um, menu-driven setup for the host bus adapters, and enter your IP information, your IQNs, etc. And once those are set up, they're set up. It doesn't change. You don't lose that information. Uh, you reboot your Zen servers. Uh, all that information is still there. I can take a Zen server out of the box with HBAs, have it set up, running, and attached to storage in about 45 minutes. So they really make it easy. There's not a whole bunch of CLI commands. Um, and again, it impacts the NICs because of the fact that it doesn't show up as a, a network inside a Zen server. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is HA, the high availability, and a couple things that uh, we've found over time, um, specifically as it relates to a, a two-server node pool. Uh, there's a concept called fencing, uh, which says that if you know, a guest, or excuse me, a host, loses connectivity to the pool, to the pool, it's going to think it's unhealthy, and in order to um, uh, protect itself, it's going to reboot and try to reconnect. The VMs that are running on that server should automatically move and start on another server. That works great in a three or more node pool. However, if you have a two node pool, what will happen is if one of the guests reboots, goes down for some reason, the second node will suddenly think it's stranded and it will also reboot and go into a fence. And that becomes kind of a vicious circle because they both believe uh, its pair is gone and that it's been stranded. There are really two things that um, can impact this. Um, with with um, HA, you need to have an HA heartbeat LUN. Uh, if for some reason it can't see that, um, this can happen. And the other is, depending on how your networking is set up, if the two servers cannot uh, suddenly see each, each other, um, this, this can happen. Um, so again, two node pools. I do not turn HA on. Uh, there really isn't a great reason to do that, and it causes fencing. And the last thing I just want to talk about real quick is with 5.5, um, in, in 5.6 this is fixed, so we're talking about 5.5 and before, um, we've seen many time issues with uh, discovering LUNs. Um, specifically what we will see is if you had a LUN and you destroyed it out of Zen server, you may have destroyed it off of your SAN, you create a new LUN and perhaps it's a different size. When you rediscover it inside a Zen server, it will find the right iSCSI information However, the size will be wrong, and there really is not much you can do about it. Um, before now, um, support has pretty much told us that you need to reboot the uh, server, uh, the farm. So you go through and do a rolling reboot, but that's a pain. The other thing that you might see is um, a message that says the back-end storage is busy, and it, you know, it can't present the LUN to you. Uh, I recently found a plugin called the Host Dev Scan plugin. You drop it into the plugins directory on Zen Server. Uh, there's a nice simple command line that you run, and um, which rescans the all the connections to the different storage, and 
br brings it back and you're then able to reconnect your line and you'll see the correct size and the back end storage won't show up as being busy. Again, if you need to get this one, uh, you're welcome to reach out to Moose Logic. Um, go ahead and contact us and I'd be happy to share this with you. However, uh, we'll share it with you with the understanding that this is uh, not Moose Logic that created it and we offer no guarantees or anything that it will work for you. Uh, so this is Steve with Moose Logic. Thanks for being with us today.